With the sad loss of Eddie Van Halen, or as we, the Dutch, know him, Edward Lodewijk van Halen, it became very clear to me just how influential he's been to so many people across the field, but also just music lovers. And one thing that struck me of seeing all these in memoriam posts and messages is that everyone talked about it like the first time they heard Eddie play, or the first time they heard that lick, or the first time they even know a guitar could sound like that. So we're talking about an absolute legend, someone that changed the sound of guitar, the sound of rock. I did the same, I posted a message on Instagram where I played the eruption tapping part, because that was actually the first thing I heard of Eddie, and I just remember being so in awe about like how how is it possible that a guitar can even sound like that? But that really changed my direction of playing uh, and I started to listening to more to that kind of music. Anyway, I posted it on Instagram and so many folks requested a tutorial. So uh, here I am. I hope to inspire more people or to get more people acquainted with Eddie. Um, check out his stuff. So I really advise everyone watching this, it may feel a little bit scared, just learn it. It's not as hard as you might think. I'm pretty sure most of you will be able to get this down if you just practice hard enough, long enough, just like Eddie did. So to honor him, I really advise you to just do it. There's lots to learn. Anyway, I love to, to shed some light on the tapping part, uh, what he's playing, why he's playing it, the technique I use to get it down. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. So of course I'm talking about the track Eruption and here is the track, this is the first chord. <laughs> And if you hear it like this, it goes over your head. So let's just slow it down a little bit. A three note pattern going on, right? So the chord we're hearing actually is an arpeggio of C sharp minor. And okay guys, there's two things I forgot about. One is that the piece eruption is actually recorded in E flat, meaning every string is tuned down a semitone. And the second thing is that my strat was already in that tuning, so that's why I didn't notice. <sighs> I should have known. Anyway, here is your tuning note. And that should settle it. Let's continue. And C sharp minor is just three different notes played together. And the three notes of C-sharp minor are a C-sharp, an E, and a G-sharp. This is a bit theoretical, of course, but I'm sure Eddie knew this because he's known to have just practiced eight hours a day in his bedroom, and when everyone went out partying, Eddie was practicing. So these are the notes we're playing. C-sharp minor, fret two on the B string, the E, fret five on the B string, and fret nine on the B string. These three notes form the C-sharp minor chord. So how do we get to that insane speed? <laughs> well, we can do it like this. That's how we usually did it. No, what Eddie did, let me show you. Double-handed tapping. What we do, we play the first note with our index finger and we tap on that G sharp, fret nine on the B string. And we tap on it with the tip of our index finger or the middle finger, you can do both, it doesn't matter. Both is fine. I change around whenever one gets sore. <laughs> and then we just tap so hard on the note that the string behind it resonates. It starts vibrating, so we hear that note played. And a good exercise is to just play it without sound. So you really have to dig deep. 
you should, it should be clearly audible even without an amp. And then we do the pull-off technique and this is what makes it so easy to play fast, easy. We do a pull-off with that same index finger you just tapped with. It flicks sort of down so we basically hit the string again. And because we're fretting fret 2 on the same string we hear that note ring. I've seen people also do it up ways. But my preference is do it down. So now we got two notes of the arpeggio. We need the third one, and the third one is to hammer on with the ring finger on that same B string, fret 5. And again, with that ring finger, the tip of your finger, the hard part, really hammer it on, smack it in there, and for this goes the same, even without an amp, we should hear it. And that is basically the entire technique used for this eruption solo. So the first chord, C sharp minor, we play it eight times. And then we go to the next chord. Okay, and it goes too fast. Let's slow it down. Just half speed. Okay, we're here in A major chord. And the easier thing, we only have to move one fret up from C sharp minor to A is just Fret 9 goes to fret 10, so we have fret 10, fret 5 and fret 2, and we play the same picking pattern. Eight times, so after each other. So a good thing to notice is that I'm resting the thumb on the top of the neck to give me some anchoring, so my hand is just steady. And also try to mute the strings that aren't played because they will give a lot of feedback and noise when you don't uh, do that. Now we go to the next chord. This is a bit tricky. We slide those two fingers up to fret four and seven and the index finger stays on the same spot. Let's listen. So at the end of the bar, he switches up, but the first six times are played like this. Fret 10 on the B string, 4 and 7 on the B string. And this chord is a B 7th chord. Um, we can also analyze it differently, but I think it's a B 7, but we get to that later. So it's 4, 7 and 10. So the major 3rd, the 5th and the flat 7th. So the root, we don't play the root. Oh wait, we do. So we um, move our finger at the last part of the bar, number seven and eight, to fret 12. So we play this six times. And then two times we move our index finger to 12. So resume. Sweet. So C sharp minor. A major, B seventh. And then we go, and this is why I think it's a B seventh, to E major. So the B seventh is the dominant seven of E. So that chord resolves to that E chord, right? That's a very classical resolution. So that's why I think it's a B seventh. Beautiful, beautiful pattern. So we play that tapping part, fret 5, 9 and 12. And this is, I think, the trickiest part of the entire riff because the stretch is pretty, well, pretty big. Um, and this is an E major chord, E, G sharp, B. Listen. Hearing it slow down like this, you just hear how clean Eddie was of a player. It's amazing. So that's four chords already, four bars. And knowing the theory behind it also gives you way more structure in learning it because it's just easy to remember. C sharp minor, A, B seventh, E. Beautiful pattern. Very basic, so it's easy to remember. A 
Okay, next chord. So here's sort of a key change going on. We go to C major, from E major to C major, but it all goes in a right direction and C major isn't strange at all, but we find out later. So C major, of course, the E over here, fret five on the B string, fret eight on the B string, and fret 13 on the B string. Play it eight times or six times and then the seventh and the eighth time we slide our index finger again to the next one. Listen. So he basically introduces the next chord with just one note. It's very cool. And then we move everything two frets up. So if this was a C major and we move everything two frets up it becomes a D major, of course. And we do the same technique. We move our index finger up. And then we land at the E chord again. So we started at E. That was like the resolution for B7. And then we played C, D. Very classic again. It's almost classical, like they call him the Mozart with the guitar, right? So it's C major, arpeggio. D major. Resolving to E major. Beautiful. And that E major is played seven beats. That's just a thing. You can play it eight or if you want, but he plays it seven beats. Maybe to stress that it's the resolution. So in total till here. C sharp minor. So after that E goes a bit crazy, it goes like a little bit all over the place. So I, I, I stop naming chords at this point. It's just trailing off. So we play for 12, 15 and 17. So we play this two times. Then our fretting hand moves down one semitone. Again one semitone. And again one semitone. repeat that twice. So after you did that, we basically do the same, but now we start two frets lower. One thing I like to think about is that when we end, this one moves a semitone up and this one down two semitones. And then we are at the new starting point of the new bar, like this. So you do the same thing. same thing, but now just two frets lower. And then we do the same thing. So this one goes up one semitone, this one down two semitones, or a whole step. So now we start at 8, 11 and 13. And then we land at the end part. So this is clearly a B major chord. So B major, playing a B over here at the B string, fret 12. A G sharp over here, fret 4 on the B string. And over here an F sharp. Classic major triad of B. And did we learn where B resolves? Well... 
E minor is just the same as B, but then our uh, fretting hand moves up one semitone. So it's 12, 5, and 8 instead of 4 and 7. So E, G, and B. And you repeat that twice, or eight times on each chord, basically. The last bar is insane. He switches between B and E every other beat. So between 4 and 7 and 5 and 8. And then we do the crazy whammy dive bomb stuff. playing everything on the neck pickup by the way I played it on the bridge I don't know why lazy anyway so in total let me just play it one time slowly so everyone can see what I'm talking about <laughs> So one section, now we go to the crazy part. Yeah, man. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and to keep the spirit of Eddie alive, just watch his stuff, listen to his music and be happy that he recorded so many great pieces and so many songs and just keep him alive. Anyway, have a lovely day. Cheers.